This is a video for section 3.3, Visual Properties. These are properties you can get from a polynomial function just by looking at it written in standard form. The learning targets for this lesson are that given a polynomial function in standard form, you can tell how many total roots the function has, what the y-intercept is, the maximum number of u-turns the graph may have, the end behavior of the function, and whether the function has odd, even, or no symmetry. A polynomial function has just as many roots as its degree, or the highest exponent. So looking at the first example, the highest exponent is 3, which means that this function has 3 roots in total. Looking at the second example, highest exponent again is 3, so this function has 3 roots. Looking at the third, highest exponent is 4, so this function has 4 roots. Looking at the last example, the highest exponent is 2, so this function has 2 roots. The y-intercept of a polynomial function is the constant term. So the constant term is the term that has no variable. So for number 1, it's 1. So the y-intercept is 0, 1. For number 2, we have a positive 3. So the y-intercept is 0, 3. For number 3, same thing, the constant is a positive 3. So the y-intercept is 0, 3. For the last one, it's a minus 3. So the y-intercept is 0, negative 3. Now if a function does not have a constant term, the y-intercept would be 0, 0. Same as with identifying the minimum degree based on the number of U-turns, you can find the maximum number of U-turns based on the degree. So looking at number 1, the degree is 3, so the max U-turns is going to be 1 less than that. So for this example, the maximum number of U-turns this function could have is 2. For number 2, same thing, we look at the degree and we take 1 less than that. For number 3, the degree is 4, so the maximum number of U-turns is going to be 3. And for the last example, the degree is 2, so the maximum number of U-turns is going to be 1. End behavior is a little trickier from the function than it is from the graph, but you have to look at two things. The first is you look at the degree, whether it's odd or even. And then you look at the leading coefficient, whether it's positive or negative. So if the degree is even, then f of x is going to go towards either both positive infinity or both negative infinity. The sign will depend on the leading coefficient. So if your degree is even and your leading coefficient is positive, then both will be positive infinity. If the degree is even and the leading coefficient is negative, then both will be negative infinity. If your degree is odd, then f of x is going to go to negative infinity for one and positive infinity for the other. And this is based on the leading coefficient. So if the leading coefficient is positive, then when x goes positive, f of x is going to go positive. If the leading coefficient is negative, then when x goes positive, f of x is going to go negative. Here's a table summarizing what I just said, so you can look at your leading coefficient and your degree, whether or not your degree is even or odd, and whether or not your leading coefficient is positive or negative, to get a statement for end behavior. For example one, first we look at degree, which is odd, and then we look at our leading coefficient, which is a positive one. So since we have an odd degree, we know that our f of x is 1 is going to be positive and 1 is going to be negative. Since our leading coefficient is positive, it's going to match what x is doing. So here x is going negative, so f of x is going to go negative. Here x is going positive, so f of x is going to go positive. For number 2, odd degree, positive leading coefficient. So this is going to be the same as number 1. As x goes negative, f of x goes negative, and as x goes positive, f of x goes positive. 
For number three, we have an even degree and a negative leading coefficient. This means that they're going to go in the same direction and they're both going to be negative. So f of x goes towards negative infinity here and towards negative infinity here. Here we have even degree, positive leading coefficient, so this means they both go in the same direction and they're both going to go positive since our leading coefficient was positive. Symmetry of functions is based on how you could fold it in half. So if a function is evenly symmetric, if it's symmetric around the y-axis, so if I took my graph and folded it across the y-axis, it would have even symmetry. Odd symmetry is when it's symmetric around the origin. So we'd have to fold it in half across the y-axis and then fold it in half across the x-axis to get it to be symmetric. It has no symmetry when it's neither even or odd. So a shortcut is if all your exponents are even, it has even symmetry. If all your exponents are odd, it has odd symmetry. And if you have a mix of even and odd exponents, then it has no specific symmetry. In order to figure out if your function has even or odd symmetry, you just have to look at the exponents. So looking at number one, we have a three, a two, and then this term technically has an x to a zero. So we look at if they're odd or even. So we have an odd exponent, an even exponent, and then zero counts as even. Since we have a mix of odds and evens, this one has no symmetry. If, however, they were all odd, it would have odd symmetry. If they were all even, it would have even symmetry. So looking at number two, we have a three, a two, and again, this one has a zero. So we have an odd, we have an even. I'm gonna stop here because I already see there's a mix, so there is no symmetry. Looking at number three, four, two, this term here with the x technically has a 1 on it, and then this one still has the 0. So we have an even, an even, and then an odd. So we have a mix, so there is no symmetry. Look at number 4, we have 2, 1, 0, so we have an even, an odd, we have a mix, so there's no symmetry.